statements. Just do an inception on this to give an overall view of where we're going with our auditing. Um, 
um, so like what IS covers responsibility, what covers planning control, what covers your accounting system, what covers evidence, use the work, work of the work of others and reporting, what IES each of them comes under. It's actually maybe instead of having a whole list of them, you actually if I if you know, if I need to know what IES I need from planning, you actually have them there in one little section by themselves. Okay, so just hand them back there to you as well. Now Okay, so if we go over to page 7, 
Okay, we've done, this is just kind of repeating a lot of what we've done. Types of audit, audit financial statements, operational audit, compliance audit. Then you have two types of auditors, your internal <coughs> auditor and your independent, your outside <laughs> auditor. Okay, and we've looked at that the last night. Okay, the certification of the auditor. Okay, they're just, they've given four there now, but they're actually none of the thing all together. IUPA, CPA, Chartered, uh, Chartered Certified Accountant, SEMA, um, there's more of them, but they're the main ones that actually look at the, at the auditing, okay, who actually are allowed to be auditors in Ireland. Second one is the ACA, or the fourth one, or the fourth one is the ACA, Chartered Accountant is the ACA, isn't it? Um, yeah, Chartered Certified Accountant. the ACA then. Which one? ACCA is Chartered Certified. It's Chartered it? Certified, yeah. And Chartered is just ACA. ACA, yeah. And CPA and IPA, the IIPA, Institute Yeah, this is. Yeah, yeah. Do you agree with that? You say, oh, I want to come to you, accountant. Are you a Chartered Accountant? That's the first thing I hear. And there, no. Everybody thinks you have to be a Chartered Accountant. It's because the engineering is the same. Chartered engineers to do certain different things. Is it, yeah? yeah. Why is the difference? What, 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 There's no difference. It's just, it's just different. Like <coughs> the IIP is one body, yeah. CP is another body, Chartered. It's, just another body is chartered like that it's, it's the same. You're, you're the same thing, it's just different names. Yeah. The one would be different, maybe, would be SEMA. The people often look at SEMA as being more towards industry rather than towards uh, practice. What's, uh, what's SEMA? Sorry. Um. I'm not sure now. Management anyway comes at the end of it. Certified Institute. What is our second word? Certified Institute. Of Management Accountancy. Yeah. So that would be more towards yeah. industry as it is. Anyone yeah. possible. I'd delight where we're doing, doing the death down the same route has been working in industry. Mm -hmm. Like the four leads are the same. Just charter has been around the longest. That's the one reason that the yeah. the the There was. Charter or something, they were initially like by one degree or something. Like yeah, that. they were like, probably one of the very first there. Yeah. And then the ACCA have been there, they're like globally known, they're there a long time too. Yeah. And then like CPA and IP are, are the new Same level qualification, isn't Same it? level qualification, yeah, across the board. It's just a different body. It's like doing your shop, I mean, Tesco Duns are, they're all shops, they're all accountants just under different names. But that's the first thing you always hear, being chartered. And what's the difference and why you're not chartered in there? Okay, I did my exam just as well as anybody else. <laughs> okay, so the assertions. Okay, I'm not going to go through the assertions here now because we've got through them before. Okay, so we can skip on to that. I want to go to the audit process model. Okay, so you have a little model in place for actually doing your audit. So your phase one, <coughs> client acceptance. Phase two, your planning. Phase three, testing and evidence. And phase four, evaluation and judgment. Okay, so the first one, you're actually accepting the audit from the client. Phase two, you're planning it. Phase three, you do all your testing. And phase four, you come up with your opinion and you give that opinion back to your client. So phase one, client acceptance. The objective, the client acceptance phase of the audit plan. Phase 1 involves deciding whether to accept a new client or continue with this existing one. And the procedures are evaluate the client's background and the reason for the audit, determine whether the audit is able to meet the ethical requirements regarding the client, determine the need for professionals, communicate with pre predecessor auditor, prepare a client proposal, select staff to perform the audit, and obtain an, an engagement letter. And this comes up as a question what, what are your objectives for your client acceptance? and what are the procedures you'd actually use, okay? So you look at the back, as if you've not done an audit before now, you look at the background, determine whether the order is able to meet the ethical requirements, determine the need for the professionals, so like if you need to bring in um, an expert, generally if you weren't, if you didn't know enough about that actual business, you bring in an expert to actually help you out in it. Communicate with predecessor auditor, prepare the proposal, select staff to perform the audit and obtain an engagement letter. And the engagement letter there, that comes up as a separate question. It comes up as what is an engagement letter and might be asked to draft a little a small engagement letter, like putting in the headings. I will actually have engagement letters 
for you as well. Okay, so phase two, planning the audit. What is the objective in planning? Determine the amount of type of evidence and review required to give the auditor assurance that there is no material misstatement of the financial statements. Your procedure will be perform our procedures to understand the entity and its environment, including the, inti the entity's internal control and there are preventative and our detection controls. Assess the risk of material misstatement in the financial statements. Determine our materiality. Prepare the planning memorandum and audit program contain the order response to the identified risks. Okay, so we're going to prepare the planning memorandum. So I'm going to bring in the cop the next time we're doing them now, I'll bring in the planning memorandum and show you what's actually included in the planning memorandum. Phase three, testing and evidence. The objective is test for evidence supporting internal controls and the fairness of the financial statements. So our procedure will be test the controls, so then to test the transactions and the procedures, test the details of the balances and search for unrecorded liabilities. But this is all aside in our testing and evidence. So what I'm just going to give you do is just give you an overall view of what we actually will be doing inside in our audit. And is that where you kind of take in a big place, you just take a sample? Yeah, you, you would take it. Yeah, that's it, yeah, yeah. Phase four then, evaluation and reporting. The objective is complete the audit procedures and issue an opinion. You evaluate the governance evidence, perform procedures to identify subsequent events, review financial statements and other report material, perform wrap up procedures, prepare matters for attention of pa for partners, report to the board directors, and prepare the audit report. So you're actually coming, you're actually coming to the end of you've done all your work now, you've formed your opinion. Okay, we're going to we go to our four opinions later on, and you're going to report back now to the client of what you've actually found inside there, and tell them what they should actually improve on, where they have made mistakes, where you found mistakes inside there. Okay, and you actually have to document all this and actually give them letters and memorandums of what you found. So if you're inside an audit firm, right, and this is what an audit firm would look like. Okay, so we're down to with another firm. How you okay? So you start off with your order partner who is the principal or the owner of the firm. You've got your order manager, supervises the seniors. Your order senior does the order field work having the necessary experience to do so. And then your staff accountants, these are the people underneath who do all the donkeys work really. Okay? They do all the, the really boring stuff doing all your ticking and crossing and all this there, that, where all that, that work gets done. And that's where a lot of, I mean, when you take a degree in accounting, you're going to one of the big four, that's where you're actually put in, down the bottom there on the staff accountants, and they get you to do all this type of work. Okay, so you've got your audit partner, your audit manager, your audit senior, and then your staff accountants underneath it. The order responsibilities, okay, gather sufficient, complete, evidential matter, gather uh, materiality, reasonable assurance, professional scepticism. Okay, error versus fraud in, use, auditors usually find many errors, po er, stuff posted to the wrong, the wrong account or posted to the wrong journals, incorrect application of gap, fraud, misappropriation of assets, financial reporting fraud, misappropriation at any level, reporting for preparation by management, fraud hard to find in errors because of the attempt to conceal the, the fraud. And I said if you went to the ODCE, the Office of Director of Corporate Enforcement, you'll actually see all the fraud that's been reported. It actually makes good reading if you've got time to actually look at it and it shows what the director did and what kind of um, an error or what kind of fraud that actually reported and it gives you how many was reported in the year and they're increasing every year. But they only give the ones that were reported that were found to be true. They are found to be true. Yeah. yeah. So they were really they can prove them then. Yeah. 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 And what happened in the director when they were disqualified, you know, from being a director for so many years and all that. Okay, the score for the legal acts under the fraud. All of must arrange the order in order to have a reasonable expectation of detection of material misstatement of fraud. The order does not offer any guarantee to detect fraud. Okay, so your transaction cycle is in. 
It's used for the order to break it down into cycles. Cycles include related accounts. So you have your sales cycle, including cash receipts, accounts receivable, write offs. Other cycles, acquisitions and payments, payroll, inventory, capital acquisition, and repayments. Okay, so you get in the asset and how you actually are going to pay for it, and you have to get a copy of all the leases, all the loans, the terms of them, what kind of interest charges, and get all that verified as well, and have all that inside in your, your paper. Okay, our research shortage, okay, I think instead of reading down to these, the paper we had is actually better because it gives you the implication, it gives you the examples of each of them. Okay, let's slash. Okay, clearing the audit in on the bottom of page 16. Or set the objectives and responsibilities for the audit, divide financial statements into cycles, know the management assertions about accounts, know general audit objectives for classes of transactions and accounts, know specific audit, audit objectives for classes of transactions and accounts. This is all, all doing at the moment now is actually, we're actually just planning our audit here. Okay, these are just all our assertions again, so just get by them a minute. Okay, and on page 18, the same thing given us here again. Plan your audit, perform your controls, <coughs> perform your analytical procedures, and then complete your audit. Okay, and the next part then is just about ethics. Okay, and don't do the question there the last night. I'm, going to, I'm not going to read you all ethics again. What I want to do is just... Um, Give you exam papers for the ethics side instead of re and where you can actually pick out the ethics problems in there. Yeah, the questions are the same as the ones in the ethics uh, course. Yeah, they're all they'll be all the same. They're all the same wording. Yeah. Integrity, objectivity, professional competence, and due care, confidentiality, they're all the same. Yeah, no matter. The they're all the same. Yeah. Then the, just on page 22, <coughs> independence, okay, that the order must appear to be independent. And the threats are self-interest, self-review, advocacy, familiarity, intimidation. So familiarity is like you've done the audit for 10 years, I mean, are you over familiar with the audit? Self-review, are you actually just auditing the work you've actually done yourself, which would happen in a lot of smaller audits. Safeguards in two categories, created by the professional and legislation or regulation, and you've got to have to have a safeguard in the work environment. Okay. Um, so you have to read professional accountants and public practice. Professional appointments. Okay, if you get if there's gifts and hospitality going on there, which remember the guys last day when they were um having the art and they got the they got to use the learning tickets. Conflicts of interest second opinions, fees and other types of remuneration, and whether they want them to do tax for them and help them out in court, and um, marketing professional services. Okay, for the moment that can do for that part of it, independence. Okay, as I said, I'm going to do questions with that, which actually makes it more interesting, I think. So for tonight, I'm just going to finish up with that for tonight, okay? We're not finished, finished. I will just go through a couple of the exam papers and then we'll finish. But are we? <coughs> a quarter tonight. Don't forget a quarter of an hour just looking through the papers. So if we just go back over the materiality, the controls, and the treat, the treat our own risk, our inherent risk, control risk, and our detection risk. And just get in, just get a feel for that. Okay? And just 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 to keep maybe that. You just keep looking over the, the assertions, okay, because as we go on in the exam questions, the assertions will be more what we'll be looking at, okay? And just to give a read over them every now and then. I know it's hard now to think about an exam, but it doesn't have to be known, do they? Sorry? The seven assertions, they have to be known. They have to be known, yeah. They have to know them, they have to know yeah. them. yeah, yeah. And um, I, I'll have a handout for the next night where um, it, um, it's actually from an ACCA one, it actually gives. A good um, thing of how to remember them. It's got A E I O N U. So if you remember, it, there's a, a way you can remember it then, you know, kind of a short hand way. So I'll do that the next time you're actually doing it, okay? And I have one as well on materiality, just a good little article that was written 
And then I have another one about, um, you know, over familiarity with an audit. Do you know what I mean? What happens then? And it's little articles that will help you hopefully get the overall feel for the auditing. Because I know it's hard enough. I used to find this one of the hardest ones I did when I was doing the, I don't know why, but the auditing. The auditing, yeah. Just trying to get the, the overall feel for it and everything. It's all the theory, yeah, and it's trying to, you know, if we can bring it back to real life, it helps a lot. Okay, so if we go to, this is the June 2010 paper, that I'm just going to give a look at some of the questions here. So, remember I said you had to do, there were six questions, you had to do five. It's actually slightly different. You have to do question one, and you've got six questions to do four. Okay, I can and that's the same. You have to do same question one. Yes. Same throughout, yeah. So you do question one, and that's always the same. There's like four or five sharp questions in it, and then the other ones are purely on a topic or they're a little case yeah. that they give you. The most faster is 50 again, is that same 50 usually? again, same as, yeah, the combination. Yeah. So this, the first one here, give examples of two possible test and controls procedures that an auditor might perform to gather evidence about the effective operation of internal controls over credit purchases. You are to identify the controls to be tested and draft the appropriate test of controls. Okay, so we're going to get our controls there. So if you go over to, I actually give you solutions here now as well, just to help you along. So two possible test control procedures in order for might perform to gather evidence about the effective operation of internal controls over credit purchases. Check a sample of 30 dispatches in the year to ensure the control in place to ensure all good dispatch or invoice op are invoiced operated correctly in, per in the period. Review, review two months in the year to confirm that all credit or account balances are reconciled to the supplier <coughs> statements at the month end. Okay, so that's I can do I mean, instead of reading through all the stuff we read through there. I think it's actually maybe easier to look at it like that. So two internal controls. Check your goods dispatched which are invoices. And when you check your goods dispatched, you're checking that the, the amounts that were dispatched were right, the prices were right. Okay, stuff like that. And then that your your credit or account balances are reconciled to supplier statements at the end of the month. And that's fairly that's normal like controls like isn't it? Um okay. Okay, we can't do the next, we can't do two, three or four on that one at the moment. Um, okay, if you go to the number five, sorry, number five of part one, I should say. I'm still on question one, sorry. <laughs> yeah, number five there. Outline the four methods of gathering all the evidence that are available to the auditor and give an example of an order procedure that illustrates the use of each method. Okay, so if you go to the solution there, four methods of gathering audit evidence are inspection of fixed assets to confirm existence of the assets. Okay, so that's the inspection to confirm existence. Observation of the, at the, of the end of the year stock count to confirm the accuracy of the stock count as we have arising at the year in stock values. Confirmation of the bank balance directly with bank to confirm accuracy of the bank balance and the recalculation of wages accrued at the year end to confirm the accuracy of the same. So they actually do the, they, they recalculate every month? They recalculate, just, just to make sure, yeah. Like you wouldn't do the whole year, you'd pick um, weeks within within the year. And that length of an answer is fine for that's, four Yeah, there's only four marks, so yeah. you need f just four good points. Yeah. If you can put in a so fifth one... That's just the point and the example there all in the... All in the one, thing. yeah, yeah. And like if you look at our... Do the, the ones we have here, see like they have done their inspection of fixed assets to confirm existence of the assets. But <coughs> here, existence, a move more to include fixed assets, section the balance sheet existed at the balance sheet date, and then what we do is actually go out and actually see did it actually exist at that date. So I think it makes more sense to look at that from question, doesn't it? It's actually hard. It's one of the hardest parts to actually think what they're actually looking for. Outline four methods of gathering all the evidence that are available to the auditor and give an example of an audit procedure that illustrates the use of each method. So inspecting the assets, okay, and confirm its existence, observe the end of the year stock take, confirm the bank balance working with the bank, which we've done in every account anyway, 
and then recalculate the wages accrued at the hearing to confirm the accuracy of the same. So I think that's a good four methods, but I, I would have thought, for example, then you would have to fill into more detail. Yeah, right, more but because you see, it's only four marks. Sorry. Do you know what I mean? They can't expect you to, do you know what I mean? And do it in bullet points. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, so all the kind of questions are kind of that way. There's no, like in business management, there's no waffle. No so waffle, yeah. Bullet, bullet, and point bullet points, let's go. Short, concise answers. Short, concise answers. See, there's no solutions, I don't know. There are no solutions. Yeah. Yeah, they accept that. Yeah, yeah. Some of them are actually very small, mm -hmm. so I'm going, when Richard comes on it, I'm going to actually get him to confirm that yeah. they're okay. Because like I see, there's some instance like tax, where there's six marks for giving two or three lines, which I don't know, is that, do you know what I mean, right, will you actually get your full six marks? So I'm just going to confirm, I've actually missed the question getting ready for him for when he, he comes down. What day has he come down to you? Whenever, when, when Jenny like comes back, it, it'll be sometime in November, then after that. Yeah. yeah. I might get it to win um, Barry, to the other guy, the boy that he was yeah, here for a county, and he's here as well, to make sure he came and night they were doing the tax. Yeah. Yeah. I would say he could go most times, it's just he doesn't, like he said, no, he can get it that way, with that. Like, no. Yeah, but he might, he, he, I think by the word was good, he might still come to him, mm -hmm. job, ask the questions on that for the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's our first one. If you look at question two there, so that's the duties of the order from the Irish company law. Okay, and if you look at the solution, all I've done is given you, they've given the, the full list down below. So it's that duty of the auditor to order financial statements according with relevant legal and reg regulatory requirements and accounting stand and auditing standards issued by the Auditing Practices Board. Report to members of where the financial statements give a true and fair view and are properly required in the company's in accordance with the Companies Act 1963 to that's reached 2013 now. Okay, that's the most important one there about the giving true and fair view. Okay, report to the members where the proper books of accounts have been kept by the company. Okay, see so it's all reporting to the members, it's not reporting to the directors, it's reporting to the, the members. Report to the members where the balance sheet and um, whether at the balance sheet date there exists a financial situation that will require the convening of an extraordinary general meeting. So it's like if the company was um, um, looked like it couldn't keep going, or that it was um, what's the word um, insolvent. Do you know what I mean? You have to convene an extraordinary general meeting. Um, report where the auditor has obtained all the information, and explanations necessary for the purpose of the audit. And where the company's balance sheet and its profit and loss account are in agreement with the books of account. <coughs> Report to the members of if, um, if in the order of opinion, information specified by law regarding directors' remuneration and directors' transactions is not given, and where, the practic and where, where practical, include such information in the report. Read the director's report and consider the implications for the audit report if the auditor becomes aware of any apparent misstatements within it. Okay, so like even if you could do them in the, even little bullet, more short and bullet form if you want to. That's like the ETR you know, is in, in this in that way. Right? List them up that way, yeah, yeah. And when you when we see now when we when we do all all this um the auditor's report, it's actually all that is actually inside the auditor's report. So it'll be that can cover their duties and it covers our order report letters as well. <coughs> and back to the question there again. A private limited company may in certain circumstances of avail of an exemption from the requirement to have its financial statements audited. So if the qualifying condition it must be satisfied the company to avail this exemption. And just just when you look at the solutions, they actually have the old amounts in. Okay, so just give you the the new amounts there again so you can actually change them. Okay, so instead of 7.3 million, it's 8.8. .8. Yeah, so it's eight point yeah, seven point three. Yeah. yeah, it's eight point eight ish. The assets are not less than four point four million instead of three point six five. Yep, yeah, you're doing two. Okay, so it's eight point eight and four point four. It is because these are older <coughs> papers. <coughs> Okay, so this is. Okay, so the to 
employ for company for all the exemption. Okay, the company must be a company which the companies at 98.6 apply, so it must be a private limited company. The amount of turnover must not exceed 8.8 million. The gross assets of the company are less than 4.4 at the end of the financial year. The average numbers of the employees must not exceed 50. The company must not be a parent company or a subsidiary company. The company must not come within one of 19 classes of companies listed in the second schedule of the 1999 Act. The company's annual return to which the accounts for the financial year in question are attached must be furnished to the CRO in compliance with the Companies Act 1963. That means the returns must be delivered to the CRO not later than 28 days after the company's annual return date. Furthermore, when annual return to which accounts for the immediately preceding financial year was delivered to the CRO, the return must not have, must not have been must have also been filed on time. And our next financial year in which the all exemption is being claimed is the first financial year of the company. The company must also satisfy all the conditions set out in section 32 of the relevant act in the respect of the receiving financial year. Okay. If if you can have the there must be a private limited company, it must not exceed 8.8 million, 4.4 million, million, employees not over 50, cannot be a parent or a subsidiary company, and the company's annual return must be filed on time and the year the preceding year must also be filed on time. If you can remember those ones, don't worry about the other two, okay? So number A, B, C, D, E, G and H. They're the most important ones inside there.
Okay. Yes, please. Yeah, that's it, yeah. They, they, I don't, but do you know what I mean? When we're reading the controls earlier on, it's like, do you know I mean? A whole load of jargon and stuff put in there. When you actually look at them, they're actually quite common sense and stuff that actually are being done on a day to day basis in, in most companies, like, aren't they? Okay, draft in detail four tests of control do you want to take as part of the audit for the wages system, including the proposed sample size? Okay, so I know we haven't done, do you know what I mean, the wages cycle, but I think it's just a good thing to look at and see what you actually would be doing. So the four tests of control do you want to take as part of the audit of wages systems? A sample of 30 employees will be selected and for one week in the year, a test, of control, a test of control will be undertaken to determine if the control to ensure that employees were only paid for hours worked operated effectively. Is that what the sample size is? 1%? Um, it, 30, it was 30 divided by 3,000, that 1%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you obviously said a material, materiality of 1% now or an odd risk of 1%. And what's our, um, you know, our yeah, revenue, a half to 1%, assets, half of 1% to 2% and profit before tax 5 to 10 so revenue like revenue expenses so that's like the half to 1% so taking 30 people out of the 3,000 people okay for and get that to on your all the materiality page there the very first page of it a sample of 30 amendments made during the year to payroll standing data will be selected and the test control will be undertaken to determine if the amendments were correctly authorised. So you have to have, a, have to find the paper trail there that there was a, a change made inside the system and who authorised it. And then how you have to have someone to check it after to make sure that the, what was done was the correct change that was actually made. So you have to, be, you know, you have to have some kind of a letter in there with the manager's signatures in the bottom. A sample of 30 wage, of 30 wage payments during the year will be selected and a test control will be undertaken to determine if the payment was correctly authorised in accord with the bank mandate approved by the board of directors. Okay? So that they were actually paid properly, really. And then a sample of 30 wage payments will be selected and a test control will be undertaken to the control in place to ensure employees are paid at the correct rate of pay operated effectively. So you look at the 30 employees, okay, and say, um, you have a 10 euro an hour rate, okay? And you've got a certain rate when you, when you work two hours overtime, you get another rate, three hours overtime, you get another rate. If you work on Sunday, you get a, uh, another rate. If you work on Ben Holiday, you get double time for that. And you have to check, you look at these 30 people and look at their wages and make sure that, that those rates were put across, right across throughout the system. And if you went through them, okay, and you found the, ter the 28 or the 30 were okay, your orders would be okay, wouldn't it? But if you went through when you found out that you thought that 20 out of the 30 weren't doing right, you'd widen your sample then and do more tests on them, see. Okay? Will I, leave, will I leave it there for tonight, yeah? Yeah? But does, does, does that help a bit? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm saying? Practical, do you know what I mean? Instead of just reading really about the controls and how what they actually are, you can actually relate it back to a, a real life example. And we'll do that the same with sales. Purchases, inventory, assets, okay, and, and it'll be separate. And I actually have my notes where you have the cycle for each of them and what you put me out of each of them for, okay? You can be able to answer some of the things without actually having it like a textbook. Yeah. You really have to give your own, your own version, your version of, it. of it, yeah. They're not looking for like, and it's better if you can use, if you use a practical life example to mm -hmm. it shows you, you, um, you know, you understand it. Like textbook definitions that are people like your understanding. Yeah, that's it. You like for the assertion of you need to know the words. Yeah, yeah. and your sufficient all the evidence and direct and stuff. But what are you looking for the controls? Putting your own words. Yeah, yeah. Yeah.